coming from a bipartisan perspective was important because what's happening to women in this country impacts all of us. It doesn't matter whether you have a D or an R next to your name. If you are bleeding out in a lobby of an emergency room in a state that has now criminalized women's health care, that's what we're facing on top of other extremist agendas trying to take women back. So the idea of us uh, at Seneca, we have an ad called We Won't Go Back that we made even before Kamala Harris was in the race. So mm -hmm. we felt like, well, we're on the right track here. Um, but that's the, the vibe we were getting from women, women regardless of their political affiliation. So seeing this and being here and being in this environment is markedly different than the Republican Party and the, the joyful warriors that are here, the camaraderie, the energy, the enthusiasm, it's inspiring. And we firmly believe that if you galvanize women, we'll save this democracy. And that's our goal at Seneca Project. Well, we spent a lot of time talking the last couple of weeks about the rapid turn that this election has taken this campaign. It was just a couple of months ago, people were talking about suburban women breaking for Donald Trump, that this whole thing was falling apart for Democrats. And because it's happened so fast, we haven't had so much of a conversation about the historic nature of this candidacy or this election, have we? No, we haven't. And that's something that is so compelling to me and so many women. I look at my mother. We're Michiganders. She's 98 years old. And she was talking to me actually a few months ago about how we're angry. And I was like, who's angry? <laughs> and she was like, me and my crew of girls that are like 75 <laughs> to 103 yeah. years old. I said, why? And she said, because they're trying to take away our rights. They're trying to take away our rights to choose. And I was like, mom, you're 98. You talk about reproductive justice or reproductive freedom. And she said, do you know how many women I knew pre row who died during childbirth? Mm -hmm. And that hit me in the core. And what I love about the Seneca Project is that it's bipartisan. We are all Americans. We are women in this organization. And we are trying to fight and make sure that women ultimately have the right to reproductive justice. And that is one of the things that the Seneca Project is going to ensure across the country we're getting the messaging out that this just doesn't affect Democratic women, independent women, or Republican women, the issues around IVF, the issues around contraceptives. That is something that affects all families. And that is one of the things that really appealed to me about the Seneca Project. Well, and of course, you serve as the finance chief. And as you talk about getting the message out, most of the time that requires money. And we've had a conversation <laughs> not just about the re-energizing of, of female voters and the attention they're paying to this race, but the way in which more people are donating. The Harris campaign says 60% of the $310 million they raised in July was from women. And I just wonder if you think that's sustainable, if that money is going to keep flowing. Oh yeah, I not only think it's sustainable, but I think it's going to continue to yeah. grow as we see more and more what is actually at stake. When we continue to see the rights of women that are being attacked, that's something that I, I've continued to see it trend. And, and not just with registered voters, which we are seeing more women register to vote, but we're seeing it with young people. Mm -hmm. Well, so we leave the convention uh, tomorrow and it's the sprint. We've got a debate in the beginning of September, and it's going to be amazing how fast this goes by. To think we have 75 days is somewhat scary to consider uh, right now. So what's the strategy for Seneca to seize on that very short window? Yeah. What's the road show going to look like? What do you have planned? Yeah, so I think that this truncated timetable actually benefits us because the enthusiasm le level is so high that post-Labor Day is really when everyone starts to pay attention. Right. And so now when ballots start getting sent out and women particularly are, are paying attention to all of the things that are under attack and under assault that transcends party lines, they're going to go, okay, what do we need to do? Um, so what our plan is, we're, we're fo focusing on the battle ground states because that's where this is going to be won and you're only talking about a hundred thousand voters in about four states that's it this is going to be one in the margins so as we're speaking to these moderate women giving them the permission structure that it's okay for you to vote Republican this time you don't have to agree on everything because about the, the privacy aspect of this yeah. it's your ballot your choice just like with your body it's your body your choice it's your ballot your choice and no one else's well and on the ballot in some of these states including battleground Arizona is literally abortion. Right. And it's also on 
on the ballot in a state like Florida, which yes. we don't consider to be a battleground, but some Democrats, including Congresswoman Debbie Washerman Schultz, who we spoke with here yesterday, has suggested Florida might actually be in play and abortion could be a reason why. Will you spend resources yeah. there? Well, it depends. I mean, obviously, Florida is almost a, a white whale um, mm. for, for a lot of reasons, like Texas is too. Mm. But yeah. what's interesting is that Florida is even in the conversation. You have eight states with abortion on the ballot, with women's rights on the ballot. Those ballot initiatives are getting there because of bipartisan signatures. Mm. This is not just coming from one party, particularly places like Arizona, which is critically important too. Um, 577,000 signatures, it's a record. Mm. That means that these are women from all across the board and men who are looking at the situation. We also talk to the girl dads because we know that girl, the, the relationship between dads and daughters is a very powerful one and a very persuadable one. So we'll also be targeting those girl dads, explaining to them what's at stake and do they really want their daughters in a future where they don't have the same rights as their grandmothers. So that is all um, part of our comprehensive strategy of targeting those women in battle ground states and places where they have initiative ballot initiatives sure. is even better because the ground operations right. there keeps people everyone's engaged. welcome that's right, right. everyone's <laughs> welcome that's we right come one come all that's this right. is for women we want you to help the seneca project get some of our ads on the air in the battleground states yep. and beyond because this affects all americans you yep. said something important though we're talking about a hundred thousand yeah. people think of what that is on a percentage but this is like a basis point of the entire yeah. american it's population really on the margins yeah, oh it's, my gosh listen, so why wait time in anything other than the seven battlegrounds. It's like it's like a Michigan home game, right? That's right, Crystal. <laughs> why would Michigan you hail to the home big home right? We're going to the big okay. house now. Okay. <laughs> why would you look outside the swing states though when you're fighting over that small a number? Well, that is what we're doing at the Seneca Project. Yeah. We yeah. are within the swing states, to your point, uh, and it will be decided there. And we are deeply committed to getting the messaging across around reproductive freedom for all women, all families. Do you really feel like you're being competed with on this messaging or the counter? messaging rather because when Joe and I were in Milwaukee last month listening to those who were on the stage a lot of them white men specifically the issue of reproductive rights kind of being ignored we had a lot of conversations with this notion that the Republican Party seems to have abandoned the attempts to court suburban women well in that's particular. unfortunate we'll take the suburban women great yeah. <laughs> but do you think you're having to fight them for that vote or do you think that vote actually you're the only one with that with that audience that they're targeting I think we're not taking anything for granted mm -hmm. right would you say that Tara I yeah, mean we're not taking I, I would, anything for granted I would agree with that this is going to be a tough race this is by far you know we're, we're going to win it it's a, no 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 we're confident that there's a path to victory but this is going to be incredibly close which is why every vote matters here and the fact that the Republicans chose a ticket that wasn't exactly friendly to women's needs or rights and that they're taking that for granted and almost disrespectfully insulting women like this they're almost doing our job for us as far as messaging is concerned because women can see through this they can see through the insults they see through the the childless cat lady comments and <laughs> you know every week it's a different set of insults for women different demographics of women and that mobilizes women and you know they're looking at this and saying we are not going to put up with this anymore, and you're not going to take our vote for granted. We make up the largest propensity of voters in this country, and we're the majority in this country. We're coming out. So, it's at their, <laughs> so if MAGA wants to continue to do that, it's at their own risk. That's I wonder what you expect to hear on this specific issue tonight from Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. It was noteworthy. Joe Biden didn't like to say, does not like to say the word abortion out loud. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. Should she? I think the vice president has been an incredible spokesperson and advocate for women's rights writ large, and specifically women's rights around abortion care, which is health care indeed. And I think that she has made that case extremely well to the American people. And I think that she will continue to make that because it is something that is so critically important. I mean, our lives are on the line, the lives of our daughters, the lives of our children. I mean, the fact that J.D. Vance does not believe that a, a, a person raped, a, a child raped, has the right to an abortion is disgraceful and tragic for women and families across this country. And the, the, the messaging around freedom, I think, is the most important thing. And as a former Republican, that appeals to the constituency we're talking to because it's bigger than just abortion. We've seen that they're coming for contraception, for IVF, for no-fault divorce. It's the freedom. Do you trust women to make the best decisions for their families, for their bodies, for their daughters and their futures? And Republicans don't seem to do that. But I think what Kamala Harris is doing, messaging everything around the idea of freedom, is taking that back. Republicans do not own the 
concept of freedom and individualism. And so that's what I think has been a very smart pivot in the messaging that's Absolutely. appealing, particularly to those right of center women who are looking for that permission right. structure to vote for Kamala Harris. Right. Republicans don't own what it means to be a patriot. Correct. And I think that that's something with the Seneca Project. We are patriots, and this is for all Americans, again, no matter what your political affiliation is.